So, um, what I'd like to do today is to introduce a new curve counting variant, uh, and hopefully, uh, this might be useful later. So, the paper is in the archive. Very fresh. Okay, so let me start with a brief introduction to the curve count invariance. Um, well, since 1995, curve count invariants are defined in following certain procedure, as I will describe. Okay, so let X be a fixed, smooth, projective variety over C. Okay, we want to count the number of curves. Uh, we want uh, we want we want to count curves in X. And unfortunately, the space of smooth curves in X are usually non-compact. So what we need is first of all we need a compactified moduli space of curves. Let's say it's M. Secondly, since 1995, we need to require we need to we need to have a perfect obstruction theory, which I will record in a few minutes. On M. So, and then, uh, given the perfect obstruction theory by the work of Li Tian and Bernd Panteki, we have a multi class which is called the virtual fundamental class. But I mean, uh, Chao and Hilbert are compact. So. I'm sorry? Chao and Hilbert are compact. You said in the Oh, yes. I, I said that the space of smooth curves is not compact. Ah, smooth curves. Yeah. OK. Because yeah. You said curves. OK. No, I understand. OK. Then automatically, we have a standard procedure to generate a multi class called virtual fundamental class of correct dimension. Oh, well. Sorry, let's and bracket virtual. And then fourth step is to define invariance. And these numbers are defined by taking the cap product with cohomology classes on M with the virtual fundamental class. And uh, we take the degree zero part. So since 1995, every invariant follows these four steps. It's defined by following these four steps. OK, so what is the perfect obstruction theory now? OK, to make it simple, let's suppose there is a global embedding of M into something smooth. And let's suppose this is also quadriprojective. Well, then. Um, a perfect obstruction theory on M um, is a morphism of complexes. As follows: First, you need the you need the coherent shift E1 and E0 and the morphism alpha, and then. Well, for, for this embedding, we have the idea shift of this embedding. And i mod i square goes to, goes to the cotangent shift of y restricted to m. And we have this d operator. And we have phi 1 and phi 0. This quantity square. And the first row is denoted by e dot. This is a two-term complex of sheaves. And the second row is <coughs> the truncated cotangent shift, cotangent complex of M. <coughs> and this morphism should satisfy certain conditions. Okay. So because I, because of this assumption that there is a global embedding of M into a smooth quadric projective variety. I can assume that these two guys are locally free. E1 and E0 are locally free. Secondly, 
Um, so I can think about the zeros cohomology, H0 <laughs> phi, which is from co kernel of alpha to the co kernel of D, which is omega <coughs> m, is an isomorphism. Secondly, H1, H negative 1 of phi, which is from the kernel of alpha to the kernel of D, is subjective. So if these two conditions are satisfied, then we say it's perfect obstruction theory. So usually it's more convenient to take the dual. So if you take the dual of this, then you get a uh, phi dual, and it goes from cotangent complex <coughs> truncated dual that goes to E dual. Okay, and it should satisfy the following conditions. I take H0 of phi dual, then it's an isomorphism in H1 of phi dual, you should be injective. So your phi 1 is phi minus 1 then? This is minus first place, this is 0. No, no, no. If I take the dual... Your arrow, your arrow from E1 should be... For you just call it H minus 1 and then you call it phi 1, so... He's saying that oh, phi should be phi sub 1. 1 sub is minus 1. Yeah, this is phi minus 1, upper index. Low index 1, upper index minus 1. Mm. This mild notation, this co mild notation. Okay, thank you. So, um, so this implies that the zeros cohomology of E dual is, gives me the tangent shift. of M, and then the first cohomology of dual of E gives me the obstruction shift. Conditions. There are other conditions. Sorry. I mean, for, before you have conditions on H naught of phi, and then you have conditions on phi dual. So these are independent conditions. Can you explain the logic? Such that one and two. Then after dual, what is the logical meaning of what you wrote? The dual statement is equivalent to the state. Oh, is the dual statement equivalent to the previous one? No. Yeah, I think so. But we're really, you're really at the moment working in all dimensions in all, uh, for all kinds of curves and so on. You haven't yet said uh, Calabi or... No, no, it's just for everything. It's just the general. So maybe you, what you mean is H naught of phi and the dual is outside the brackets. Outside the bracket? Yes. You're dualizing H naught of phi and you're not taking H naught of phi dual. Then the statements are equivalent. Well, trivially so. Sorry, but <laughs> is H not of phi dual equal to H not of phi close the brackets dual? Might be some tautology which I don't see. Uh, If something is an isomorphism, then the dual is an isomorphism. This I understand. But why H naught of the dual is an isomorphism is the same that H naught of the phi is an isomorphism. Yeah, I 
so I, I think it's not an easy exercise. It's not an obvious exercise. Obvious exercise. I can explain this later. Okay, but okay. it's true. Okay. okay. Let me, let Okay. Let me just ignore this. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I mean, it, it, it was enough to answer it is true. <coughs> they are equivalent. The two yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, that's yes, what I yes, wanted to yes, know. I don't yes. want everybody to give complete proofs. Okay, right, right, right. I mean, so it's not not one statement is equivalent. Okay. It's not important for the rest of the talk. It's just, uh, it's, I just wanted to give you a feeling of what this means. Okay, so next. Um, I want to talk about quasi-maps. What, what are quasi-maps here? I think it's pretty well, well known to uh, many, many, many algebraic geometers and representation theorists. Okay, so suppose you have a curve C in PN minus 1 in projective space. <coughs> that everybody knows that this, is, this gives us uh, an immutable shift, O PN minus 1 restricted to C convertible sheaf over C, and it comes with uh, sections x1 to xn, which are homogeneous coordinates of the projective space. So, so I can say that um, a curve inside projective space gives me um, an immutable sheaf E together with uh, n sections. Okay, so that's a quasi. Okay, so definition a quasi-map on a curve C is an invertible sheaf E together with uh, a non-zero morphism alpha from O, C, N to E. So we choose N sections. Okay, and then um, on an M pointed quasi stable curve, or some, some authors use pre stable curves, <coughs> some authors say pre stable. Uh, is a connected Connected curve, reduced curve, with at worst nodal singularities. Um, with smooth, distinct mark points. P1 to Pn. And we say this quasi-map is semi-stable if omega c sigma pi is nf stable if it's ample. Okay, now from now on, I will assume that 2g minus 2 plus m is positive. I assume this numerical condition so that well, so that there is at least one stable curve. Okay, so then I will make a bunch, I will define a bunch of, uh, a sequence of uh, algebraic stacks as follows. Okay, first of all, MGM. So, so far there's no condition at all on the section. No condition about... The sections could all be zero. Non-zero. Non-zero. Not everything is zero. Yeah, but linearly independent. Then linearly independent. I ask the same question again. Yeah. Not necessarily linearly independent. Just non-zero. Okay. So MGM is like everybody knows is the stack of of m-pointed quasi-stable curves of genus G. So this means that if you have a if you have a scheme as the sections over a scheme as it's a collection of all proper flat morphisms, proper and flat morphisms such that 
So the geometric fibers are endpointed quasi stable curves. Of genus G. Well, it is it is an, it's not difficult to see that this is an algebraic stack. By simply inserting more points to make it a stable curve, then stable curves are parametrized by schemes. So um, algebraic stacks and it's also smooth, because there's no obstruction. It's a smooth algebraic stack. Secondly, on top of MGM, I can think of, I can define a new stack, G P G M D. This is the stack of a pair, C and E. Here C is an endpointed quad stable curve of genus G, and E is a line bundle, an invertible sheaf of total degree D on C. Okay, so well this this is well one can easily show that this is also an algebraic stack. Arching stack. And this is also smooth because there's no obstruction for this. Sorry, can can you go back to the question? So alpha could just uh, I mean you could just have a mapping to a point. So just a single section. The yes. image could be a single That's section. That's allowed, yes. So I'm going to define a huge stack, which is which can be very wild. Okay, this obstruction classes obstruction space all obstruction sheet vanishes with well, we have this new system result. Okay, on top of this I can define a new stack QGMDN. So this is the stack of triples C, E, and alpha, where C, A, the pair of C and E is an object in P, G, and D, quasi stable curve together with the inverter sheet of total degree D. And alpha is of morphism from the direct sum of n copies of the structure shift to E. Okay, and then there is an obvious forgetful morphism from Q, G, M, P, N to P, G, M, D. So again, simply we forget alpha. Okay, so, so far, so PGMD is a smooth algebraic stack, but it is not obvious whether why this should be an algebraic stack or if it is smooth or not. Okay, and the recent theorem by Cheng and Jun Li, um, this is in the archive, this archive this year, January, And they prove the following. Let, let's call this morphism eta. They prove that this eta is representable morphism of stacks. And then, and then there is a relative perfect obstruction theory. Obstruction theory. There is a relative version of the definition of perfect obstruction theory. And they prove this existence of relative perfect obstruction theory. Roughly speaking, it is something that everybody can expect. So, the relative dualizing, a uh, relative cotangent complex, L, Q, G, M, D, N over P, G, M, D dual goes to the direct image R phi star of uh, the universal sheaf. Universal invertible sheet E, direct sum N, over Q, G, M, D, N. So what is E? 
So we have um, universal curve C over Q, G, M, D, N, and we have universal invertible shift E. Q, G, M, D, N. This is pi. So an obvious corollary of this theorem is the following. Because this is this is smooth smooth RT stack and this morphism is representable and it has relative perfect obstruction theory, then there is the cone construction in derived category gives me an absolute perfect obstruction theory for Q. So there is a perfect obstruction theory on Q G. Not relative, absolute perfect obstruction theory. So in particular, if you can find if you can find any open substack U in Q G M D N, which is open and Billy Mumford. I mean, sorry, you define the perfect obstruction theory for a sub uh, sub variety, and but here is a vibration. Right. There is a relative version of this instruction. The vibration there is no relative inverse. So, look. Uh, so, so the sorry. cube can be embedded into a non-singular project, into a smooth quasi project. Okay. Sorry, this, so this Q is, is embedded in a in a bundle over P or something. Like this is not required. There is more general version of perfect obstruction theory, and uh, then I have to introduce. I have to talk about everything in the direct category. I wanted to. Okay. Make, to give uh, a flavor. Yeah, to give a flavor, only a flavor, uh, not to give a precise definition. But I have a different uh, a different uh, uh, objection. Your curve C can be reducible. Your curve C is allowed to be reducible. reducible yes. So yes. saying degree of a line bundle does not it, it allows infinitely many co connected components. Right. 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 And right. so and so your guy uh, and these co connect different connected components are all right. going to have completely different dimensions. Right. Right. Different properties. Right. Right. It's horrible. I mean, it's not definitely not separated. Yeah, yes. Yes, very, very uh, wild, very wild. But anyway, it's an algebraic stack, which is smooth. And that's good enough. If you have a smooth algebraic stack, if you have relative perfect obstruction theory, that gives us an absolute perfect obstruction theory on QGMD. And if you, if you can find any open Billy Mumford substack U of QGMD, then there is induced perfect obstruction theory because it's open substack. And then because it's Billy Mumford, furthermore, if it is prop, proper and separated, then, perf, and then virtual fundamental class makes sense. <coughs> Therefore, you can obtain curve counting invariance. So you mean proper over Q? No. Proper over C for me. But I mean, if it's open and proper. Okay. Yeah, that's possible in steps. It's on, it's on <coughs> the but I, okay. it's against the intuition. But in, in steps, it's what happens. <coughs> Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, <coughs> so this is a famous example of stable maps or conceptual model space. So maybe the stable map space is, is usually not introduced in this fashion, but you can think of the stack of stable maps as a, as open substack of QG and MD. Okay. So M G M bar. E n minus 1 d. What is this? This is the space of all morphisms from a uh, from a nodal curve C to P n minus 1 of degree d. C is an element in M G, an object in M G M, and degree of f is is d. And the automorphism group of f fixing the marked points. It's finite. So you mean degree of f times the 
degree of f of c. Degree of degree of f of star O1. So, but you can think of this as follows. You can think of this as a, a quasi map. So, C and E alpha, because C is this guy, E is the pullback. E is the F proper star OP and minus one, one, pullback of O1. And then alpha is simply given by homogeneous coordinates. Particularly in this case, this alpha is surjective. So, so I can think of this as a substack of QGMDN, this open substack. And everybody knows, I mean, it's proved by Konsevich Manin or Berent Manin or uh, Fulton Pandari Pande that this, in fact, is a proper separated the Limon first step. The stability is open conditions, open stop step, but still proper separate. I don't think I don't see why a map can is a basis. Oh, because you're it's a morphism from C to P and minus one. Yes. So absolutely. with a vector basis of uh, P n PN minus one has a fixed basis, X not up to X n. Yes, yes. It has a fixed uh, it is not P of a I think that's a projective space. It's P of C n. Okay. Yes. I yes. I yeah. fix a basis. But furthermore, of you can put a unique permission metric. This part is really fixed. Define. <laughs> so I'm not modifying anything about the target. Target space is there. It's, it's fixed. So it, your stability condition has got absolutely nothing to do with the map alpha. Absolutely. Your map alpha is basically the only condition on alpha you said is that it's non-zero. Non You're not even yeah, requiring yeah, that yeah. it's non-zero on each component of C. Right, right. So my objection is that the projective group is not a linear group. So it's a small difference, okay? Since you're very precise, but the projective PGN is not GN. That was my objection. Oh, okay. Okay, so let me fix basis. <laughs> homogeneous model. Fix homogeneous model. Fine. So, um, so the wait. So automatically, this guy had perfect obstruction theory. So automatically, the open substack has a perfect obstruction theory because it proper separate the Lim stack. We have a, a virtual fundamental class for this, and that therefore we get invariants which are called chromophyte invariants. Another example is a recent one, which is about stable quotients. Follows. Um, so here, Q G M bar. P n minus 1, D, is the stack of the following. So it, it, uh, it consists of a coherent shift F on C together with n sections. It's very similar to quasi maps, but here F is not necessarily invertible or locally free. F can be, F is just a, F is just a coherent shift in this case. So C is in M G M, and then, and then we think about the case where rank of F is n minus one. Okay, and then the important condition is that the torsion part of the shift F has support in the smooth part of S C. That's the stability condition for this. The torsion <coughs> part of F has support in the smooth part. So I can think of this as a stable a quasi map as follows. So I, I think about kernel beta. Kernel beta includes in OC direct sub n. 
Because of this condition, torsion part has support in the smooth part, the kernel beta should be an invertible sheet. This guy is invertible. So F is locally free at the nodal points, nodal finger points. So uh, F is locally free <coughs> there. So it's invertible sheaf. So I can take the dual of this. So I can take the dual of this. So I get OC direct sum N goes to E. So E is the dual of the kernel of beta, which is called alpha. And then the condition is that the dual of this guy, 0, E dual, that goes to OC direct sum N. And OC direct sum on and quotient by E to O. This part should be stable quotient. So yeah, anyway, you're assuming that beta has generic rank n minus one. Yeah, generic rank n minus one. But yes. you're writing rank f equals n minus one, and you mean rank eta, rank beta. Uh, the rank of f. This yes. guy is rank n minus generic right. rank n So minus if the one. map B is, for example, beta is, for example, zero, then uh, it's not true that the code panel has. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot the important thing. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. sorry, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. This should be said. Oh, yeah, this is called quotient, same the quotient. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, of course, of course, of course. We're talking quotient. Yes, okay. it's quotient, yes. yes. Uh, I'm sorry. It's very it's my fault. I, sh I should have this important condition. So activity is important. Anyway, so in this way, you can think of this as an open sub-stack of QGM dn. This is also an open sub-stack. Um, so we, by the same argument, this open sub-stack we have perfect obstruction theory, and it is proved by MOP Marian Opria Pandari Pande that. This guy is QGM Tn minus 1 B is a proper set for a Hitler monitor. So therefore, you can you get a, a virtual fundamental class on this proper Hitler monitor stack. So you get curve counting invariants, which are called nowadays MOP invariants. So, as I explained, uh, if you can find the open substack of QGM dn, which is proper separate the Mumford, then you get a curve company variant. So why not, uh, why not try to find more examples? Okay, because these days, as I said in the beginning, studying the relationship of the curve company variants turned out to be very fruitful. So, it makes sense to introduce a new invariant. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. But before that, let me talk about... Um, so far, I talked only about the uh, quasi-maps to projective space. But in the end, I mean, like many physicists want to know the invariants for Calabi-L3 right? So how to move from projective space to Calabi-L3 form. That can be achieved by a new technique called goofing sharp witten models. So this technique enables us to move from projective space P4 to quintic threefold, quintic Calabi-L. Okay. We can use P4 to calculate the invariance for quintic Calabi-L threefold. Okay, so let's fix the quintic Calabi-L threefold x. This is a zero locus of the following, sigma xi to the fifths, i's from one to five, inside P4. Okay, then you can think about the corresponding quadrimap space, q, g, n, d, x. So, what is this? This is the space of objects in Q, G, M, D, N. Sorry, 5. N is now 5. P4. And these alpha i, the, the alpha i is a summation from O5 to E. And these correspond to the homogeneous coordinates 
in the stable vector space case. So it's natural to impose the following conditions, sigma alpha to the fifth is equal to zero. So it's alpha is component, five components. Corresponding to the five homogeneous coordinates of P4. Okay, this is the definition of the quasi map space to X. Okay, so then the new idea of Cheng and Li is the following. Like physicists, when physicists want to solve a problem, they they make the problems more complicated okay, by introducing a new field, right? It's opposite to mathematicians. We try to remove as many things as possible, but physicists try to impose more things. So, so what do they do? They think about the, the even bigger stack, Q, G, M, D, and hat. Can you note it like this? So this is the a stack of quadruples, C, E, alpha, and P. So this guy is the new, called P field. Okay, so C, E, alpha is the same thing, some, uh, an object in Q, G, and D, N. And P is a new guy. P is a section of the following. C, um, E tensor minus five tensor omega C, dual like you see. So this is a new player. Okay, so we made the shift, we made the stack even bigger, and the theorem they prove is the following. So first of all, this new guy, Q, G, M, D, and hat, is also an algebraic stack. Okay. And it comes with perfect obstruction theory. Basically the same argument as in, in this case. Secondly, the obstruction shift admits a cross-section sigma from the obstruction shift to the structure shift of Q hat. So th this is something I call cross-section. Uh, homorphism from the shift to the structure shift. Okay, the obstruction shift is is the H1 of the dual of the perfect obstruction theory. I'm sorry I used E before. Dual. If you have a, per a perfect obstruction theory, we take the dual and H1. That's the obstruction shift. So why, is it, why does that matter? Because there is a previous <coughs> theorem we proved, we proved with uh, Jun Li that distance of cross section is very important, very, very useful, extremely useful. If you can find the cross section, then you, you can really reduce the calculation to lower dimensional case. Let M be any Billy-Mumford stack. If you can find the uh, cross section of the obstruction sheaf, the perfect obstruction theory, then the virtual fundamental cycle, virtual fundamental class, can be effectively localized to the locus of, to the zero locus of sigma. So everything takes place in the zero locus of the cross section. Turned out to be very, very powerful technique and enabled us to calculate the ground fit invariance of general type surfaces. It has, this technique has many other applications as well. And, uh, well, Chang and Li found the cross section for this Q hat, and therefore we can reduce the calculation of the virtual cycle to zero, zero locus of sigma. Well, 
So, and then the following proposition tells us what is the zero locus of this sigma. Suppose I have an open subset u hat in q g zero d five, no mark point genus g degree d to p four. Suppose this is open. And suppose for any object in u hat c e alpha p, um, the support of p is contained in support of alpha. For instance, this condition is always satisfied if we are thinking about the stable map space, because support of alpha is everywhere. This condition is okay. Sorry, can I, before maybe it will disappear. In the theorem, I assume we have several cross-sections. You can really localize to the common zero set of all the cross-sections. That's true. Yeah, you okay. can do that. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. That's a good observation. So if this condition is satisfied, this condition is obviously satisfied for stable maps and stable quotients because it's subjective, it's subjective. So this is not requiring too much. Then, then this zero locus of the cosection is not bad. It's really the space of quasi-maps is inside the quasi space, the stack of quasi-map to X. Okay, so it's this intersection of U hat with uh, Q G zero D X. No P field. No P field. <laughs> okay, so so this guy is not proper. Not proper. This guy is proper. Because of the P field, this guy cannot be proper. And so so if you think about the ordinary virtual fundamental class of Q hat then it doesn't give you a curve counting invariant because it's not proper. However, if you think about the localized virtual cycle, it has support in the zero locus of sigma, which is proper, because this guy is proper, right? It's proper. Um, open, sorry, open, open proper separated. Yes. So, therefore, Therefore, we have we still have curve counting variant with, with with using this p field. Now the theorem. Sorry, in proposition you mean there exists a u hat. If there exists a u hat, that's by definition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then examples of u hat is like this: this guy and this guy. Okay. Surprisingly, if they prove this following, so mg0 bar p4 d with p field, we include p field. It's the same amount space together with p field. That's exactly the open subset of this guy. And because this condition is already satisfied, then we have this zero locus is proper, and in this case is exactly the, the the locus of stable maps to X. So um, virtual localized class is contained in H A zero zero child group of M G zero bar X D. Nothing, no P field. So, and furthermore, they proved that the degree of this guy is exactly the degree of the grown fit invariant of x, mg0 bar x d virtual cycle. So this is the grown fit invariant of x. That's what physicists want to know. Modulo sine, minus the sine is exactly 5 d minus g plus 1. So certainly, if you can, so certainly it is, it is expected that the localized invariant of uh, coming from open proper separate subsets of Q hat should be related to the curve counting invariant for Calabial threefold. Okay, so so on top of that, let me talk about the new results now. It's about delta stable 
cosmos. So now I impose certain conditions about cosmos. Okay. So first definition, delta is always positive real number, a rational number. A quasi-map C E alpha, quasi stable curve, invertible sheaf, n sections, and Q G M D is called delta stable. If the following conditions are satisfied. First of all, um, the dualizing sheaf of C, sigma pi, tensor with the mark points, tensor with e to the epsilon, example for any epsilon. This is the first condition. So this in particular in particular implies that an epsilon is very, very small. This part should be ample. Uh, sorry, math. So this implies that we have stabilizer morphism. So the curve C should be semi-stable. So we have stabilization morphism to a stable curve C bar. This condition implies that the curve C should be semi-stable, so I can stabilize it to get a stable sheet. Second condition is really the following. We think about the direct image E bar of E together with the direct image of alpha, O C bar direct sum n goes to E bar. This Two things. This pair is something called delta stable pair. E is, is a line bundle. E is a line bundle, yes. So if the epsilon is very, very small, this should be <coughs> non negative. Yeah? So the curve C should be semi stable. So we have stabilization motion. And then after stabilizing, um, this is, there is a notion of st stable pair uh, due to Huybrex and Len or uh, Le Gautier. Um, when C is smooth in this definition. When C, C is smooth. Smooth. C could be reducible. Yeah, but omega C, I mean, it should be inverted, but we, it's ample means uh, should be at least Gorenstein. Yeah, omega C is 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 invertible sheet. So it's Gorenstein, yes. It's a lot of curve. Semi-stable. Semi-stable, really semi-stable. Yeah, really semi-stable. Okay, semi-delta stable pair with respect to <coughs> the ample line bundle, omega C bar, sigma pi bar. Sorry, but uh, E bar can have torsion. No, cannot, because of the first condition. You can check. No torsion. It's torsion free. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yes. This part of the condition, sorry. Delta stable pair means that E bar should be torsion free. It's part of the condition. Sorry. Because it seems to me that um, 1 means that E is strictly positive on every component that's contracted by pi. Right. So when I take pi over star, it can become very, very big. That's right. So uh, yeah, yeah. So, so the contracted rational component can have only degree 1 or 0. Mm -hmm. cannot, have, cannot have higher degree. Yeah, that's part of the condition. That's part of the condition, too. Right. So what is a delta stable pair? That means the following. For any non-trivial subshift E bar prime, We require the following conditions. The Hilbert polynomial of E bar prime plus epsilon E bar prime. So sorry, this epsilon is different. Perhaps I should use something some different notation. Let's say um, gamma. Gamma E bar prime alpha delta divided by the leading coefficient of the Hilbert polynomial. It's less than 
the Hilbert polynomial of E bar plus delta divided by the leading coefficient. Okay? So the Hilbert polynomial is, re is reduced back to this ample line level. The Hilbert polynomial of E prime bar plus gamma, what is that? Yeah, and gamma is where gamma E bar prime alpha is either 1 or 0. It's 1 if this alpha factors through E bar prime. So alpha factors through alpha factors through E bar prime bar. Alpha bar, sorry, bar. bar. And then it's contained in E bar. Otherwise, zero. This, is, I mean, this, this condition comes from geometry and variance theories, the calculation. Okay, and, and delta semi-stable if this inequality is replaced by mm -hmm. uh, this one, if delta semi-stable, if this is replaced by this. Okay, and then an, an, an easy lemma is the following. There can be only finitely many deltas where, there, where the semi-stability is different from stability. This to only finitely many walls. I call these walls where delta semi stability. I don't understand. It was an invertible shift. Right. And so, what is the rank, the rank of E bar? E bar is rank is 1. So what is the denominator? The rank is one. So what is it? No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. This is not the rank. This is the leading coefficient of the Hilbert polynomial. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay. Thank you. I, sorry, I, I should have used different notation. Yeah, I, I know. Oh. It's, it's a problem. Okay. Sorry, and then there are only finitely many deltas where semi semi stability is different from stability. And I'll call the delta is general if delta is not a wall. In other words, delta is general if the self delta semi stability is equal to delta stability. Okay, then the main theorem is the following. First first main theorem. Suppose, okay, suppose delta is general. I won't, I'm going to think about only the general delta. First of all, suppose d plus delta is greater than or equal to g minus 1. Then, I can think about the open substack of delta stable quasi maps. The open substack of delta stable quasi maps. Okay, this is the delta stable. The open substack of delta stable quasi Stability is open condition. The theorem is that this is an is this is proper separated in one first step. This is a proper separated to the step. So therefore, we can take the induced perfect obstruction theory, we can take the virtual fundamental class, we get a new sequence of invariants. Secondly, we can also think about the GSW model to, from P4 to Plinkton threefold. So if d plus delta is greater than or equal to 3 times g minus 1, which is greater than 0, then GSW theory makes sense for this. Q hat delta g m g0 d5. g0 d5 makes sense. And we can think about vert localized virtual cycle, which has support in quasi maps, delta stable quasi maps to X. Okay, so this number, the degree of this this uh, this this cycle should be related to curve counting on color real triple. I don't know precise relation, but I believe that it should be it should give us curve counting on color real triple. Q was also a proper Sorry? Q was. Q was, yes. Oh, Q, 
No, no, Q. I think Q hat was not. Or no, it's not proper. It's not it's separated. Not Definitely not separated. Okay. Very, very bad. Mm. I thought Q, Q hat was bad. Okay. No, no, no. Far from being separated. The second theorem compares the the stack, the Q delta, the stacks to delta. First of all, if delta is very small, then there is forgetful morphism from Q G zero D N to P G D bar, which is the apparatus moduli of balanced line models. <coughs> It just comes from the stability condition. So when delta is very small, it just means that E bar is, is a stable sheet. The Kaprasa stability condition is the same thing. There is a morphism, forget the morphism, the Kaprasa. Secondly, if delta zero is a wall, and delta plus and delta zero are nearby, then we have a contraction no, motion. Minus. Oh, sorry. Thank you. We have contraction motion from Q delta plus to Q delta minus. There is a contraction motion. Okay, so overall you start with infinite delta. M, D, N. It goes to something in between, Q delta, G, M, D, N. And it goes to Q zero plus G, M, D, N. And it goes to P, G, D bar when M is equal to zero. And then everything lies over moduli, the lim mumford moduli stack of uh, stable, stable curves. Everything lies over M, G, M bar. This is a picture. And finally, I conjecture the following. So what, about, what, what are the dotted arrows? Oh, there is, I mean, you can vary delta from infinity to zero plus. There are finite there are many, many worlds. Yeah, you can vary so delta from small. Infinity doesn't mean infinity. It just means not a large Very large. Number. Because there are only a finite number of walls. So if you take sufficiently large delta, and that I call the infinity. Because the moduli stack changes only at the finite number of walls. During, so there so are, it's a birational yeah. construction of the right, finite There are finite many space. walls, and then in, and inside the, and this and the, interval is constant. constant. Okay, but this is, a, I mean, this psi delta zero is a morphism. Morphism, yes. It's morphism. Honest morphism. But it's birational. Right, birational. The conjecture. I make the following conjecture. I don't know how to prove yet, but the Virgil cycle of Q delta plus should be the same as the Virgil cycle of delta minus. If you take the direct image. That means we don't have a bunch of invariants, but all these invariants are the same. Get the same thing. That's my conjecture. I believe one might be able to prove this by using the circle action localization of uh, greater Pandari context, maybe. But I don't know how to prove this. Okay, finally, let me talk about possible generalization, generalizations of these constructions. First obvious thing, it's very easy, it's almost done, it's, it's completely done in some sense. We can use uh, Hesse's modular space instead of QG, MGM bar. Okay, I can simply put weights here. Okay, so I can put weights, put weights, I can put weights to the mark points. So in the end, I will get algebraic stack, the Mumford stacks over proper separated flat over um, has as much of okay. pointy stable curves. 
And then another generalization is to think about higher rank bundles. Okay, the first part is almost done. It's the same thing. Just put a to put weights there and it's done. Second part requires some more arguments, but I think it's great. Okay, let me start. Again. <coughs> 